I'm not gonna open them up and look, because I'll be doing that. Hey. Is Diapers? We got diapers. I'm Warren. Uh, am I Warren or am I Warren Fitzgerald? I'm a writer and I live here in this quiet suburban area of North London. Here we are in England. I, every day I think nothing of turning on the computer, picking up my mobile phone, putting 10 quid on the travel card so I can go on the train, on the tube, on the bus, or whatever. And yet, for the guys that live in El Manal, um, they would work probably an eight hour day, hopefully to fill one sack with recyclable material, which they can sell for a dollar. Um, they might be able to live on that dollar. I was there as a tourist and a volunteer last year with a good friend of mine, Jess. I am Jess Rothenberger. I live in Kamloops, BC, Canada. And uh, I'm a father of a two-year-old and a partner, first and foremost. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Bye Daddy. Daddy. And my passions lie in international development. When the idea of doing a documentary came up, that would have been an amazing opportunity to actually get to know these people who live in a garbage dump. Their reality is so far removed from anything that we experience in, in where we live. Uh, we just thought it'd be interesting to connect on a human level with these people. That's what's really important for me. It's, it's how what we can learn and what we can bring back, and how that informs way we live here. How do they do it? Like, how do you earn a living picking through a garbage shop? We are getting on the wonderful chicken bus and we're about to go to uh, the two hour cruise to Chinandega. It's exciting but it's going to be hot and it's not going to be the most comfortable ride in the world but hey, it's yeah. an adventure right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so today we finally got to Chinandega, and it's now getting more real and surreal by the minute. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. Tomorrow's the day, finally. I feel much better than I did last night. It's all getting a bit much. I don't know what. You know, the kind of whole culture shock and that happens every time we come to these places. And. Um, yeah, I was just feeling the heat and feeling the grime and thinking, oh my God. And this is in a kind of okay hotel. <laughs> what's gonna happen? I mean, what's gonna happen in the, in the, in the dump? But. So we're on our way to catch a ride to El Limonal when we saw the firefighters wearing the uniforms donated to them from the Kamloops Fire Department. Mejor dicho, vulnerable y no pobre, ¿no? Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Qué bien. That was awesome. Now, you want to go to Aston? Where can we meet? He pensado en la gente que vive en la en la basura y reciclar, reciclar la basura. Bueno. 
against just about everything you know before we left we, we had injections for everything but the one thing you can't have an injection for at the moment unfortunately is HIV so yeah we need to be careful and she is just just like anyone else I've spoke to in the UK she has the same opinions because it's it's just a it's common sense really <laughs> it's gonna be Mirza see you gonna go live there? Yeah. In the garbage dump? Yeah. Are you? Mirza, mama! Oh, la cumestad! Por fin! Ha llegado! Dispuesto el tiempo! Come inside. Poor people, it's gonna rob you and take your cameras in the garbage dump. I don't think so. Mirza, nos quedamos con cuánto? 25? 25 kilos? No, what are we buying? No, I'll wait there. So I actually don't like usually measure my food at home. So we're trying to figure out how much we should get and I absolutely have no idea. So we just bought supplies for 10 days basically, our food. That includes rice, beans, um, oil, things to wash clothes with, etc. I think that's what's interesting about this city it's just it, is that it's the same as any other city there's rich people there's commercial centers there's poor people probably the only difference is perhaps to our cities is that there's not people living on the place where the, the rubbish is dumped everything we're going to try and do is the way that the people we stay with do what did we do so we spent uh, Oh, hi! <laughs> yeah, bring it on. Shit, that's scary. <laughs> So yo, tu esposa, mi esposa, mi bebé. ¿A dónde están aquí? Ella ha venido un par de veces conmigo. Él ha venido a Nicaragua hace un año. Vino conmigo, pero se quedó en el Ericolillo. No ha venido. This is actually way more than I expected. I think she did this just for us. Say we've got our own thing there. She put that in for us. This is new? Yes, it's new. And this is also new? New, yes. This week. The kitchen? New. All this week? All this week. Wow. We were anxious to get involved and to start learning from people. And Alejandro was the first person to share with us his story and his dreams. Because I'm tired of traveling. I'm tired of the land. That's my dream. That's my dream. Buy a car. Thank you. 
On our way to work for the first day in the, in the rubbish. The rubbish tip? The rubbish tip. Let's see, if I'm nervous about anything, it's about meeting these people and how they're going to uh, react to us. Yeah. What are you nervous about? I get grossed out really easily <laughs> by garbage and stuff, man. Mm -hmm. It's going to be pretty hardcore, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So it's going to be a. I'm going to have to just. Yeah. Do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not think about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, organically, there's no reason besides doing something like this that I would ever get into a dump and start digging through trash. Like, I would never do that. So, obviously, it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone, right? So far, we've been in Mirce's household, and it's, you know, the hospitality is abound, and everyone's welcoming, and we're, we're encased in this nice little household. But now we're I'm not sure that Mirsa can can you know protect us her, from everything. I just asked her whether what's the reaction gonna be to us and she's like I guess we'll find out. <laughs> That's not the answer we're looking for. taken us about half an hour we kind of hovered a bit talked explained what we we're doing and then it's like we got in there and now they're laughing and kids are asking me to help them already so it's, it's gonna, like I thought it was gonna take a day it's taking about five minutes Here comes the next trailer, so everyone's really excited about this. So, Warren, can you find a plastic bag that's light and already obviously full of papers? Don't open it. No, because people don't mix bottles in with toilet paper. That looks a scary place. This is the river. And these are the cliffs that tend to fall down on people as they're working down in this river. This ground's on fire, by the way. I just, I just said, be careful. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> and these cliffs. You can see the whole thing's burning underneath, eh? Yeah. No sooner had we talked about it than our cameraman's boot caught fire. But puedes um, caer adentro? Sí, hasta caer que, adentro. A, hasta que eh. profundidad. Uh, profundidad. Yeah. Pero se te no, no. Hay un niño quemado ahorita. En la primera calle hay un niño quemadito el de la Marvel. Se quemó los piecitos, el pobrecito ah, andaba sí. y vieras cómo tiene quemado todo esto, mira. Yeah. Wow, and it just keeps coming. Oh, 
Sì, è l'ospitale. Four hundred ways, man. Need of what? See that? There's loads of syringes. It was obviously from a hospital. Um, you know, syringes with still with medicine in them, so you know that. Yeah. Clearly, no separate system for medical waste. Yeah. Like, I, I think in Canada we incinerate it, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that. like full on bloody tubes and IVs and needles. I'm actually fully grossed out right now. I'm just. I'm just doing it. Just doing it, opening bags. I'm gonna need some counseling for sure. <laughs> Nils is a good helper. There's a pachinga there. I saw it. I'm developing an eye for the pachinga. Mirza! No, is that no? Mama? Mama? There's something about. There's very just. Concerning about the plastic bottles. So it's like any kind of bottle, like beer bottles, anything plastic unless it's too crushed. But like none of the medical plastics and a certain kind of gray bottle, they won't take. So you notice when we first got here, I was offering them gloves and stuff. Pero, <laughs> and they're like, no, no, we won't use them. I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, so he, the one dude showed me the gloves somebody yeah. gave him, and they were like thick leather gloves, right? He said they don't work. So I'd like really sell them on these, right? And he tried them, and he's like, oh. And then everybody these wanted them. These are different, yeah. Yeah, because they're like, these are sticky, and they're tight, right? So you can actually get in there and yeah, yeah. feel what you're doing. Are you nice, they seem to be happy that we're here. Yeah, um, we're not offended that we're here. Um, so that's, that's good. <laughs> Just um, filled up a bag of plastic um, in five minutes and I felt like, wow, I felt like I won the lottery, you know? Yeah, and I can see, yeah. You can probably feel motivated, you can make some money, you know, oh, relatively speaking, of course. Now, tomorrow when I open the hospital bag full of bloody tubes, is it going to be easier? Because the physics is all the same, but there was definitely a psychological barrier today that I had to push through, you know? Vamos? Ya no hay más? Podemos apoyar con la separación y llevarla a la casa? Carolina. Okay. So there's no more trailers? So she said we can help bring stuff and I don't know. We'd been working with Teresa and her 13-year-old daughter, Vilma, most of the morning. As we talked after work, 
Teresa told us how worried she was about the news that the dump was going to close. Me sacó un hueso de aquí, de oh. Chaplani, así. Entéñale. Sí. Así que, ¿cuál es su, su sueño para ti y su familia? Bueno, yo lo que les digo a mis hijas, que primeramente Dios, porque yo les voy a ayudar a hacer su casita para mientras Dios me presta vida, dejárselas cómodas para mientras ellas estudian y hayan un buen trabajo. Así que, ¿te defines como una persona pobre o te ofendas si te digo sos pobre? No, no me ofende porque siempre he sido pobre. Bueno, Ese pero... es el único miedo, no tener trabajo y con que mantener a nuestros hijos, darles un buen estudio, porque si se viene el trabajo, no hay lana para mandar a nuestros hijos a, al estudio. Sí. Ellos necesitan su ropita, su mochila, sus cuadernos y hay todo eso. Porque a la, a la cuenta están ellos padrinados con unos gringos, pero no sé dónde, pues. Y luego que vienen que, que pedir para Navidad, que que, que y la cosa que resulta que no les llega nada. Si es que siendo pobre, su sueño es tener una casa de dinero, un trabajo digno. ¿Qué puedes imaginar son los sueños de los que ya tienen su trabajo y su casa segura? Bueno. Hacer en realidad nuestros sueños a nuestros hijos, porque si ellos dicen, mire mamá, yo quiero ser un contador, algo así. Ok, mijo, hay posibilidad para hacerlo, puede ir, sin quitarle el derecho a ellos también. ¿sí? Pero mi ver. sueño es estar en mi casita, viendo a mis hijos, cocinándoles, planchándoles, lavándoles, y descansando seguramente un poquito, unos días, y aquí no descansamos. Y Las vacaciones por ahí. Días, por lo menos las vacaciones, llevar a pasear a mis hijos a un parque un día, aunque sea, darle de todos los que ellos quieren, Pero saber que anda un buen billete, ¿verdad? Porque con 100 pesos, ¿qué le puedo dar a toda mi maná? Y así no puedo salir porque me dije ya en la vuelta, me sacan todo y ya cuando vengo sí, ahí no. barrido, sí, no puedo salir a divertir a mis hijos tampoco. Si te vas... Ya hay no tienes plata, pero aún si, si sí. podría, podrías ir, te preocupes que te van a robar sí. si, si no estés. Sí, exactamente. Oh. Esa es la preocupación porque aquí tengo que ir corriendo hasta afuera a la salida a la escuela y regresar corriendo porque no puedo dejar solo ahí. Oh, yeah. Si sí, ahí no es seguro. ¿Conocen la playa? Que va, no conocemos nada de eso. ¿La playa no, no conoces? Eres de Nicaragua y no conoces la playa. Es que como no salgo es como lo mismo que le digo. Dejando solo yo, un ratito que vaya, dando la media vuelta y ya, ya no hay nada. ¿Nunca has ido a la playa? Nunca he ido a la playa. ¿Chinandega, así nomás? Solo Chinandega, así nomás. ¿Y cuántos años tenés? Siete años tengo que estar aquí. Yo no, pero... tengo 32 años. 32. Sí. Bueno, mamá, muchísimas gracias. Bueno, a la orden. <laughs> I feel for them for sure. That lady has five kids, man. Just five kids by herself in that little hut that's falling apart, made of materials that she scavenged for. Like, you gotta admire that perseverance. Like, part of the reason I feel so emotional today, I think, is because of the. It's kind of guilt, isn't it, for what, for what I throw away, what we throw away, yeah. and. And and that we don't have people like this, where I, I throw my shit away, I know. where I throw my stuff away, to you make such good use of it. I know. And then I see these kids working their butts off in the mornings and then going to school in the afternoon. Just, that blows my mind.
pasa aquí? ¿Qué pasa? Todos estamos en casa. Eh, eh, eh. Tortilla. Compra su tortilla. Ah, vuelvo a ver allá. Bien. Así que la mañana y la tarde. Sí. Yes. 500. Sí, 500 tortillas. So we're gonna make 500 tortillas all day, all morning. This, all morning, all afternoon. This a family ¿A cuánto vendemos una tortilla? Un peso. Un peso. Van a ganar. Ya, yeah. ¿cuánto cuesta esta? Un peso. Un no, pero, peso. Un peso. Pero para cuesta, hacerlo, ¿cuánto cuesta? Para hacerlo, invertí 400. Hay una ganancia de 100 pesos. Mil. Sí. So they make, they make a net margin of about 100 pesos. Three ladies working all morning and all day. Mirza, no me irá la cuenta. So it's like four bucks. Cuatro dólares. Cuatro dólares sí. de ganancia. Mil por ahí. O más. Menos, cuidado. Oh, maybe even less than that. Sí, no, sí. No. Echemos rápido que vamos a entregar 20. <laughs> Get on She's like, yes. hurry up, man. Está trabajando mi tía Nati, man. Oh. Una, una bobada, eso, chaval. Una bobada. ¿Ya ves? Fíjate. René. Tortilla Candida. I wasn't sure coming in, but you know, I kind kind of assumed that um, I kind of assumed that most most everybody works in La Chureca, no, the garbage dump. And then for the money they earn, they would buy food from the market. Yeah. Or, but you can see there's a whole like little economy here that revolves around the dump, right? Yeah. So the main economic base comes from what's gleaned from the dump. But you see like here the micro business, Candida sells her tortillas to the locals. And you see Magdalena yesterday right. set up her little shop right. actually in the dump, yeah. selling like soda and cold water and, yeah. and you know food to the workers, exactly. the garbage workers. Perfect. Yeah, looking forward. We got more people coming to us and introducing themselves. Hermano, bien, 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 tranquilo. Señor, ¿cómo estás? Buenos días, todo bien. Van a pasear. Estamos yendo a la chuleca. Y vamos a quemar la cara. Vamos aquí. Pusimos crema, pues. Ah. Mi hermano. Starting to get good at spotting what we need. Sirve? Sirve? Para lo limpia así. So I was just asking her like what they find here, and she's like, well, plastic bottles and glass and all that stuff, metals, food, clothes, toys, everything, right? So wouldn't it just be easier if people like separated at source? You know, like put the bottles aside? She's like, no. Because if they did that, then they wouldn't end up here, right? So the fact that everyone just throws all their garbage together, you know, it's probably, yeah, so it gives them the opportunity to at least get the bottle. Whereas if they were organized enough up front, like we do in Canada, and, like to recycle, then they lose their job, right? You know, yesterday, hey, I was boohooing about there's gotta be a better way to do this. Well. Interesting that if like the municipal government got more organized with recycling programs, the opportunity is lost here. Right? <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> <laughs>
I come all this way and I get stabbed by a cow horn, that would just suck. We got cardboard, we got balls, tin cans, an old, I think I found a, it was an old beer bottle. Looked like beer, I think someone may have peed in it. You might want to wash that camera. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I would like to make a public service announcement to all tourists coming to Nicaragua, and Nicaraguans alike. Do not buy Raptor juice. This is not recyclable. Just throw it in the garbage and it stays there. So there's nobody get any good. Do not buy Raptor. Pick up Raptor. Yes. Yes. A two pesos la libra. Two pesos la libra. It's only two quarters a pound. That's like. Cuánto es cincuenta pesos? Y tanto veinticinco. Ten Cordoba, so that's like 30, uh, 30 cents? 35, 40 cents? You know what I like about this? Extremely hands on, many hands make for light work. Like, we'll actually feel useful. Actually, make it really good. So it's the end of the morning shift as well. And some people have collected mountains of rubbish like this and they've got to get it home. And some, some people are working on their own. So uh, what they would usually do is employ some of the um, bicycle, tricycle taxi guys to help take the, uh, the rubbish home. So, so yeah, there's a lot of work to be had down here for the recyclers and the the taxi people and everything. So we're going to help some of those guys carry the stuff and put it in the taxis and and then our morning is done. Me siento más orgullosa estar echando tortilla y no no venir a escarpa a buscar pichinga no no me hay. Muy asqueroso. Sí, muy. Pero hay unas que ya están acostumbradas a eso y Pero yo no, yo nunca he venido aquí. Tengo 15 años de vivir en el limoná, Ajá. pero nunca he venido a Escarpa. Mejor vendo, sí. salir a vender otras cosas, pero no. Apenas ganas menos. Gano menos, igual como aquí, pero estoy algo vaciado. Entonces ellos, ¿por qué no hacen lo que haces tú? Porque les da pena vender. Okay. Se sienten más favorables estar aquí que yeah. ir a que echar tortillo vender. Yeah. Es que también el negocio no es para cualquiera. Sí. Negocio hay que por lo que ver estar ahí palmeando, yeah. sacarlas a vender, tener amabilidad con la gente yeah. y eso es lo que ellos no tienen. No mire que solo son pleitos. Claro. Entonces no, eso no me gusta. Está bien. Sí. Yo me siento tranquila en mi yeah. casa, palmeando, viendo a mis niños, cocinando, lavar trastes, claro. lavar. Me siento. Igual es un trabajo fuerte. Un trabajo fuerte. Claro. claro. Sí. Me siento orgullosa. Debe sentir muy orgullosa porque tienes una familia muy linda. Gracias. Sí o no. Yeah, like I, I asked Mirza if if it's gross for the people, and she's like, yeah, it's gross. Yeah. There's more dignity in acknowledging how gross it is and still doing it than pretending it's not gross, right? We are going to visit La Señora Tere, who, as you may recall in our concept video, was the lovely woman who said that she would run and have our backs if a burning wall of garbage fell on us. <laughs> she told us today she's been waiting for us, so we're going to go say hi. And... Oh. 
Ya termine. Gracias, mamá. Oh. Bendito el Señor. ¿Está bien que estamos grabando? Uh -huh. Ok. Entonces, hábleme algo para yo poder comenzar. <risa> <risa> no sé, este... Básicamente queríamos saber qué noticias tienes, que, que de nuevo aquí en el Limonal han cambiado las cosas en el último año desde eh, que hemos parece, parece que van a cambiar porque hasta la basurera se va. Escuchamos de eso. ¿Verdad? Ellos nos dijeron que tenían miedo que el basadero iba a ir a otro sitio. Sí, va para el lado de la Tejana. ¿Pero eso es seguro? O... Seguro dice, seguro. ¿Cuándo se Entonces... En eso yo digo, pues yo no voy a salir tan afectada con la ayuda de la basurera. Pero la mayoría de la, de la gente viven del basurero, como ustedes ya les he explicado y ya, sí, y ya sí. vieron, ¿verdad? Ajá. Viven del basurero y al irse la basurera, pienso que qué va a ser de, de ellos, porque no tienen otra fuente de trabajo. Oh, y vamos por, por, por punto, ¿verdad? Pero también sabe usted, aquí hay mucha gente que eran delincuentes, y, y se han dedicado a trabajar, ¿verdad? Eh, el barrio ha estado muy bonito, no hay casi, ¿ves? No se miran casi asaltos, uh -huh. robos, eh, que se metan a las casas. Uh, but if there's no work, uh -huh. yeah, crime could be a problem. Yeah, anyway. ¿Y por qué y limonal? Vea, a veces hasta los pasos que usted da tienen que ir guiados por Dios. Porque yo sentí así, cuando yo me sentí con tantos problemas, yo le dije al Señor, lléveme donde usted quiera. ¿Ah, sí? ¿Por qué tú me cambiaste? Y me dio por venir a Limonal, pues digo, Dios me dio acá. ¿Sí? ¿Sí? Y wow. soy inmensamente rico. Dicen que no es rico el que tiene dinero, sino el que tiene a Cristo en su vida. Okay. No me sentí tan feliz cuando tuve dinero. Sí, aquí es. No es el dinero el que hace todo, sino el tener amor. Sí, de acuerdo. Sí. Ay, Dios mío, pues yo me, yo me reía porque los quería ver en el río. ¿Quiere usted sí, hacernos sí. sufrir, sí o no? Yo lo quiero was, ver. She wants to see us suffer. Es peligroso, ahí han quedado mucha gente. Es peligroso, hay acá. Sí. sí. En la basura. En la basura ¿También? no tanto, no, no, en la basura no tanto, pero por ejemplo hace poco a una, a una señora se abrió la, la tapa okay. de, de, que está aquí al lado y le cayó en la cabeza, oh, fue a dar al hospital. Así, así que usted tiene paz, Tengo paz. felicidad. Tengo felicidad, gracias. No tengo dinero. She doesn't have the money. She's like, I'm happy and I'm content and I've got peace. I don't have any money, mind you. <laughs> so you bring groups here, right? Yeah. So uh, what what do people tell you after they come here and experience this for the first well, time? Well, what's really funny is we bring people here not to benefit the Nicaraguans. We bring them here to benefit the North Americans because we are so jaded and do not understand what world poverty is because we've been so blessed. So we bring them here for them because it changes their life totally when they leave here. Um, uh, and it's not a temporary change, it's, it's permanent. Jesus loves you, and you lo ama. God loves you, you lo ama. I think as you live here amongst these people, you'll realize and see, mm -hmm. they are very spiritual people. Right, And uh, and, and we, uh, I hate to say this, but we hate religion because because it jacks people up. There's been more people killed in the name of religion than almost anything there's ever been, you know. But we are more on the spiritual side of that, right. of, of understanding that these people think God is mad at them, that He hates them, and is punishing them. Mm -hmm. uh, where and that's what the churches teach, but we we teach God loves them. Neither Warren or I are religious, and I have to admit to meeting the missionaries with a healthy level of cynicism, wondering if their support necessarily comes with a spiritual string attached. But 
With a newly found perspective now more closely aligned with the people of El Limonel themselves, I actually felt glad they were there. I appreciated their enthusiasm. The fact that they actually showed up and donated to the community. Adios! Bye! Nice to meet you! Cuidate! See you later! Amigos! Hey! La sobre mujeres! It's the end of another exhausting but amazing day. Um, and I think for me the singly most important thing or most amazing thing that happened today was a group of volunteers turned up to hand out some food to the community just as Jess and I did a year ago but what was so amazing about today was that we were now part of the community that went out to meet these volunteers and receive their donations and when they left after an hour or so we remained because when those volunteers said, wow, how, what are you doing? Where are you staying? I was so proud to point over at Mirsa's house and say, that's where I'm staying. <laughs> Yesterday, no biggie, but fell over in the middle of the dump. So, so it's not just a cup, but it's a cup that's maybe full of a lot of dirty things. So a bit of hydrogen peroxide should fucking hurt, but um, it should clean it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go to work, dudes. We're late. Yeah, you can't be late for work here because if you're late, you don't get paid. Right? Snoozy lose. The novelty is officially worn off. <laughs> Why? So I got up right up in there, up on top of the truck yeah. with that tool. Excellent. It's heavy because it's all mixed with like trees and stuff, it's right? Wet. It's wet, yeah. So you just. And the harder you give it, the more the more you get, right? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard work. ¿Qué piensa de su trabajo usted? Bueno, a mi manera de ver, verdad, lo veo la necesidad que tenemos, tienen que sobrevivir a como puedan pues, pero claro que hay otra manera de vivir, lo que pasa es que a veces se les hace como, como vicio que no quieren salir de aquí pues, pero hay muchachas jóvenes que pueden salir de aquí. ¿Cómo pueden? Yo creo que si se les da una ayuda, una ayuda, si sí, se les podía subir, porque todos los que comenzamos, comenzamos gateando. Si nadie los enseña a caminar, no podremos caminar. Pues, y yo creo que dándoles una explicación, una charla a ellas también, pues, porque puede llegar al tiempo que no exista esto. Pero ¿de dónde viene la ayuda? Él podría, yo creo que es, es una obligación del gobierno ver, ver por todo su país. Sí, es una obligación. ¿Tú no crees que es una obligación de los grandes países del norte que apoyan también? Pero si entablamos una buena amistad, creo que superaríamos mejor. Se requiere, ¿no es cierto?, una solidaridad global. Perfecto. Así es. Sí, sí. así es. Es mejor cuando hay viento. No hay viento hoy. Es just the toxic smoke is just hovering. It's brutal. It's a brutal work environment. WorkSafe would not approve. How'd you make up today, bro? Yeah, I was getting a bit too into it. I was just um, <laughs> one of the one of so people work quite instinctively in teams. Someone's on the on the truck and they're throwing it the rubbish back to their teammate who puts it in the in the bag and which is my young friend was doing to me and 
she was tossing bottles off and I was trying to keep track of them and one bounced over to the next person next to me and I instinctively just grabbed at it as, as, as this little girl next to me, she was probably about four years old, she just thought it was from her mum and she went to pick it up and I went, oh yeah, that's mine! <laughs> You're a bastard! <laughs> I was like, but I was like, yeah, just feeling that, uh, that proprietorial nature. But you're obligated to the person you're working with too, Exactly, right? yeah. So. so I didn't feel, I wasn't stealing it off a four-year-old child, I was keeping it for the 13-year-old child I was working with, so. Um, yeah. um, today we are trying oh. something a bit different than working in the dump. We're working with Ali, our lovely host, and um, he doesn't work in the rubbish. He works uh, selling um, drinks and the peanuts that he prepares at home to to drivers on the highway. So we're going to try a bit out that out today and see how we do. Pero nada de raptor. No raptor. No, no, no raptor juice. No raptor. I think we're going to get a lot of really confused, strange looks from people on the bus wondering what the tourists are doing trying to sell them water. Okay, so we're in the water factory, which is a room in this fellow's house, and it looks like he just fills a pot full of potable water, probably from the tap. It gets filtered, run through a PVC pipe, wrapped in a bag, and with this machine made into uh, all right. these. We buy a hundred of these for thirty cordobas, and we sell each unit uh, un cordoba. I'm not sure how long we've been walking now and riding the bike or pushing the bike now we have a puncture but I thought that uh, Ali has quite a long working day but it seems that most of it is uh, a large portion of it is taken up with travel there and back and just as I was thinking how hard that was, or how crazy that was, I realized that's what most people do in London every day. Spend most of their working day trying to get across London and back. So I thought we were, <laughs> I thought we were just selling things by the side of the road, but Look, he's actually putting the merchandise in the middle of the road. And we're going to sell it from there. <laughs> agua! Agua, gaseosas! Agua, agua, agua! Agua, agua, agua! Agua, gaseosa! Not sure if I'm getting in Ali's way or actually helping him. Yeah, we, I want to ask him that. I want to, I, I want to find out if this is actually useful for a hindrance or help. I asked him that and he said that we're helping, but he may have just been being polite. <laughs> well, he's got it on lockdown, right? Because he's got like a popping and a water in one hand. Yeah. He's navigating like two sides. Yeah. And it's all super fast paced and he's handing it off yeah. and there's a certain way to hand it off and to get the money at the same time yeah. without getting all confused. Yeah. And then he's digging into his pocket getting the right change while it's like super fast paced, right? I can't believe it's one o'clock. I thought it was only 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Time has flown, which is 
Well, I suppose that's good. Because I'm knackered. <laughs> que mete bastante trabajadores femeninas y masculinas uh, haciendo ropa haciendo este zapatos para llevarlos supuestamente a otro país y por qué no trabaja tú trabajas ahí tú porque es que me gusta me encanta este trabajo y es lo mío es lo que siento que es mío este trabajo y nadie me molesta me voy bien Tengo mis clientes, me compran agua, me compran... Aquí paso mi vida yo, con, para mantener a mis hijos, como ves, en medio sol, <risa> aguantando el sol. Y eso es todo lo que aguanto aquí, porque las nicaragüenses somos compradores, compramos. Tú ves que compran. Sí, sí. Y gracias a Dios me va bien. Que sea para vivir, pues, que sea para comer. Now we've got enough money to fix the puncture. Is anybody else like really hot and hungry and tired? No, you're just fucking whining again. I'm glad we operate as a family because today was not my day. Daddy's gonna feed us tonight. <laughs> Sometimes, like all of these experiences, they're enjoyable because they're a bit of a novelty, frankly, compared to the life I lead in England. If I had to do this every day, I can, I'm sure I would not be saying, yeah, I enjoyed that. Five forty-five in the morning. And our friend Diogenes likes to go to work at 6 a.m. And we're working today with him in the river. So, yeah. So, we haven't eaten breakfast because we were late. We didn't get up early enough. Yeah. You know, it's funny, usually 6 means 6.30 or 7. I think Jochenes actually meant six today. He really did. Yeah. And I'm feeling a little bad about that. And he's, he wants to go. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, let's go. So we better get cracking, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. I know. There's no turning back now. Hola. Hola, señor. ¿Cómo te llamas? Felix. Felix, soy Jess. Entonces nos dijeron que ustedes son vulnerables, pero tú dices que son pobres. Sí, porque hoy día y yo digo que es el único trabajo que tengo yo y, y tú sabes que rinde el trabajo, eso, eso te cansa. Yo se manejo con dolores en la espalda, me duelen la espalda, las manos. Pero como siempre tú sabes que el trabajo, ese es el trabajo, siempre hay que asistir. Si no hay reales, no hay comida. Andamos. Pero no te ofendas si alguien te dice pobre. Ah, no, no. 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 Me están diciendo con orgullo lo que soy. Sí, ¿no? Sí, sí. sí. Today we're not actually going to dig, we're going to see, you can see these dams that they create. So we're going to make bags and basically create a diversion. He says it's to filter the water and to slow it down. You can see they've created a whole network of streams. So I think that's what we'll be doing. So see, you can see here that it's all carved away neatly. Because what they're doing is they're cutting away at the dump and they throw it into the water. And then they use the water to get rid of all the light stuff and it leaves um, all the valuable materials in the water that sink. Are you actually getting in the river? Yeah, baby. 
Fucking hell. I have to do it. Respect. I would, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel quite man enough next to you <laughs> if I didn't do it. If I get some mysterious disease in six months, I'm blaming you. Okay. Because you could have said no and then I could have said no. Just get on All with right, it, man. Fine. Okay. Glad we did the garbage first. So I mean, I mean, I just remember the very first time I walked into the garbage dump a year ago. Yeah. That initial shock was greater than what I was feeling today, right? So having spent time here and gotten used to the garbage, doing this I think was a lot easier, but it's so tangibly gross. The first time I got, I did feel a bit my skin started crawling a little bit because suddenly everything's wet and flowing and, and soon, as soon as I was up to my waist and I could feel it go over my private, private parts all the water, all the wetness suddenly my imagination got to work and I was like oh. that was the first time since I've been here the whole, the whole time we've lived here that, that I was, my mind was uh, working overtime and that. But there's a certain tranquility to the whole experience which is really odd when you have uh, when you have condoms floating fast. I might stop with Needles. I don't even want to know. So a lot of these fires that are being built are originally these circular parts of a factory, of a rice factory, of machines in a rice factory, which are, the central part is aluminium and the outside is some substance which they don't need, <laughs> so they burn it off and uh, then each circle of aluminium, will be, each tube of aluminium will be worth a couple of dollars and um, unfortunately we have all that smoke as a result Hey Ward, you should get out of that smoke bro Taste it Papi, maestro, ¿qué, ¿qué tiene ese agua ahí? Está toda contaminada, hermanito. Tiene de tiércol, caca, ñaña. Es agua sucia de la pila aceitica. Runs right through the dump, comes out here. So you can see it's a greenish blue odiferous water. And uh, you can see about 50 feet from where it comes out. We have a family here working in it, so uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that they are literally working in sewage water. So I was just feeling grateful today that we were working probably about 50 meters upstream from the septic flow. It's just... Uh, it's like the Grand Canyon, isn't it? But the rubbish version. We're gonna film more and it's his birthday. And there's a Nicaraguan tradition where you put things on his head. He's got the talcum powder, but we're we're about to do an egg. Check this out. Gracias. Te queremos, papi. 
What a way to spend my birthday. <laughs> Gracias Scarlett. ¿Qué quiere decirles a mis amigos a Canadá, de los Estados Unidos, Inglaterra que apoyaron para mandarnos aquí nosotros gringos para hacer este video? Bueno, yo le digo a ellos, ¿verdad? Que Dios se lo va a multiplicar lo que ellos hicieron con ustedes en ayudarles para que ustedes vinieran a ver aquí la situación que nosotros vivimos aquí y que Dios los bendiga a todos lo que dieron. Dios se lo va a multiplicar. Muy bien, gracias. Nos queremos mamá. mucho. Gracias. So it's very exciting because during the little celebrations here, I just had a chat with Diogenes, and he said that all this wood here is actually for his own house that he's building on another lot nearby. And he said uh, on Sunday, could we help him build his house? And I said. Yeah, of course. So this is interesting. We're in the middle of a party and um, everything's you know, the beer is flowing, everything's getting a bit larry. And Marcella, Carolina Marcella says to me, you know, Warren, can you help me with the cleaning of the maize later? Cleaning of the corn later? And I'm like, what? I'm in a bit of getting plastered. But of course, these things need to go on. Because tomorrow is the same as any other day. They need to make a business, run a business, keep the money coming in. So, if I can be bothered, I need to get on with cleaning the maze. Woo! This is... Just listen. Pigs squealing. Boney M pumping out. Kids screaming. Crying. No dogs. They're all having a nice sleep now <laughs> because they've been barking and fighting all night. Um, yeah, roosters. Just all part of the craziness that is Ellie Manal's soundtrack soundtrack to El Limonar. So yeah, got a bit of a raging hangover after last night's birthday celebrations, but yeah, to work we must go and um, this is part of the experience. I guess I mean, people here don't seem to drink that much. They're, they're probably very wise. They know that if they screw up the next day's work, then, um, then their family doesn't eat that day basically. So. Yeah, got to get on. Oh, what's going on here? That's the, uh, that is, by the way, yeah. I asked, is raw untreated sewage water from that other reparto. Not even from the leaky smidge pile. That's full on just raw. So he's doing that so to keep the flow going straight into the river. Cuéntanos, me contabas cuánto ganabas aquí por día con dos hijos en la chureja. 
30 pesos. ¿Y los niños trabajan? No. ¿Y qué van a hacer ya si no hay chureca? No, no se sabe. Sabemos. ¿Cómo van a comer? No sabes. Si tuvieras un sueño, ¿qué es? ¿Cuál es tu sueño? Un sueño. Un sueño. Trabajar para la mejoría de mi hogar, de mi hijo. Y se irá adelante. Aquí sufrimos mucho en el invierno. ¿Por qué? Porque en cuanto llueve, un bien, en cuanto hace un vientazo fuerte, se los levantan a la mina de sí. <risa> Quedamos desnudos. La, remolino. Remolino. Oh, ya, yeah, we saw one of those. Born. Se, se los levantan a la mina de sí. Tenemos que irlas a buscar. Donde cae. Peligroso. Peligroso. Peligroso que corte a un niño. Sí, ¿no? A pesar que supe mucho, se nota, también se nota que son muy orgullosos, fuertes y se alegren. Y anoche teníamos una fiesta y les vi muy feliz. Eh, ¿Cómo es ese balance? Es que mire, para... Claro, nosotros lo sentimos por dentro triste. Sí. Por lo que, en la pobreza que nosotros vivimos pero por una parte nosotros tenemos que buscar cómo sacarlos un poquito de eso porque si los ponemos a solo así entonces los morimos ¿Te deprimes? Sí, deprimida, entonces tenemos que buscar cómo. ¿Mal tiempo o buena cara? Yo, ¿Mal tiempo o sí. buena cara? Yo hubo un año que yo tuve una, una pérdida bien pésima, pues yo lo sentí duro en cuanto me robaron mi triciclo, sí. me robaron una bicicleta, yo lo más último yo llegué al borde hasta de quererme quitar la vida. Gracias a Dios que no lo has hecho. <risa> y este, ¿de dónde sacas esa felicidad, esa alegría? En cuanto un vecino hace fiesta, ella pues yo no bailo. ¿No? Sí, bailas. Yo sí bailo. <risa> y aguantaron cuando te robaron. Seguías adelante. Por los niños, me imagino, ¿sí o no? Sí. Tuve que yo con él lo fuimos a pedir. Y de ahí. prestamos un dinero que ahí lo estamos pagando pero siguen pagando la ayuda esa? sí pero hay veces digo yo con hacer eso no no soluciona nada porque si yo hubiera cometido ese error mis niños hubieran quedado solo tal vez yo a ver tal vez anduvieran peor entonces yo le yo le doy gracias a Dios pues porque me da un poquito más de fuerza y hay veces en cuanto yo miro personas pues que se sienten que no tienen para su boca de comida hay veces yo digo deseara de tener en que sea para comer arroz que sea arroz y frijol o aunque sea frijol pero ya un sustento más o menos para mí Mirza and Carolina spoke at length about their experiences as women in Nicaragua, and we were reminded of their religious convictions when months later they sent us this disturbing video.
He was just explaining to us that he was making soup at home at his house. Ooh. And so was, we were just trying to figure out where his house was. And it's si, arbol. So that's his house right there, the tree. Tenemos hamaca para recortarlo. Okay, so he has a hammock underneath the tree, and that's where he's making soup. Allí. Allí mismo. <laughs> Okay, so you see there, it's their uh, kitchen area. He's got his chicken. El pollo. Donde consiguieron el pollo? De la basura. So they collected that from the chureca. Mm -hmm. And they put like cardboard down here. And he says they're all an extended family. So they just make a little fire there and they've got their rice from the dump, presumably. People are feeling more and more comfortable to tell me about their hardships. Not in the, oh, feel so sorry for me because I'm poor kind of way, in an honest way. I think we have a huge obligation owed now to this community. How many times have people come up to me and said, thank you, thank you so much for being here. I was like, we're just doing a movie. We're, <laughs> I haven't given you money, I haven't. I mean, I've helped you a little bit in the garbage, but there's that real genuine sense, sincere sense of being grateful for coming to visit us. And I think they know that when we share their stories, it might uh, hopefully translate into some small improvement in their lives. Señora Angela, ¿usted es churaquera? Sí, también, yes. Yo tengo 13 años venir aquí. 13 años. Y dice que van a cerrar la, el basurero. Uh -huh. Se dice que la van a quitar, dice. ¿Sí? Pero la van a llevar a que la, ya que hay gente allá no tiene más necesidad. Nosotros tenemos más, más necesidad aquí que, que si, la gente. Y allá. si cierran la chureca, ¿cómo vamos a comer? De toda la mayoría de la gente aquí vivimos de la chureca, comemos de la chureca. ¿Y si no pues chureca? comemos, pues le quiero decir, vendemos pichinga, vendemos cuadernos, vendemos aluminio. Pues si quitan la basura, ¿y qué vamos a comer? ¿Y qué vamos a vivir? Tres hijos y dos adultos. Somos cinco por todos. Right. Hay que pelear para que los trailers no vayan para allá. Y, y, y nosotros, y él trabaja en el río, pues. Porque ahorita mi marido está enfermo. Ahorita he estado gastando dólares para, para las árabes. A él le iban a hacer una, una, un examen. Pero pide mucho de años. Nosotros solo compramos los árabes. La edición vale 50 pesos. Árabe vale 300 pesos por todo, 500 pesos gastar. ¿Ya me entiendes? Sí, sí. Yo todo esto lo real la comida, lo, le di a él que lo comprara. Porque nosotros no tenemos que lo ayude a nadie. ¿Qué se menciona? Que solo para la comida ganamos. ¿Y que los demás gringos en Canadá y los Estados Unidos se enteran de sus luchas? ¿Qué, esperas de, qué espera usted de ellos? Yo no sé que si, si yo me voy es porque me ayude. I think when we first got here, um, some of the people that we've met were putting on a bit of a brave face, but were willing to make themselves a little more vulnerable today, and uh, there are some tears, and I think I'm really starting to wrap my head around how hard it is for people here, how desperately hard it is for people here. I know it was easier for me to kind of romanticize a little bit their situations around how happy and well adjusted they might be in spite of their situation. And overall, I think most of the people that we've met are happy or find happiness. But, um, struggle. Struggle. Really hard. So what just happened for you, bro? Well... I'm feeling a little rough today. Just, uh, about 4 a.m. I needed to get going to the toilet, I felt like I was going to have diarrhea and then I just now I puked. 
and um, I don't know what it was. It might be just you know <coughs> drinking some water or something I ate, or it might be the just the kind of when the fire started burning again this morning. That kind of set me over the edge. I think my mouth is just constantly the taste of burnt plastic and metal. <coughs> But, um, yeah, that's the first time I've puked up in about 10 years, man. Ooh. It sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so did you have diarrhea this morning, or? Well, no, it wasn't that bad. It was, it was about a type 5 on the Bristol Storm Form scale. <laughs> Te está bañando tu mamá. Te está bañando tu mamá. Uy, qué frío, mami. ¿Cuántos días haces esto? Es tu tarea. I just tried to work helping Diogenes build his house, but I'm too weak, uh, so I've crashed back into bed. Uh, it's a Sunday, a day of rest, they call it here, but all around me is sounds of industry. Tapping out of tears, clang of cooking pots, the banging of nails to make houses. Everyone has worked so hard here all the time, sweeping the streets today, the women. And so I feel right lazy. But and there's the music that seems to keep everyone going. It's like a, uh, it's like without it, they'd be too relaxed. <laughs> Oi, oi, oi. Oh, it's so nice to feel well. Um, just had my first meal in 24 hours or so. It seems to be, seems to be staying put, which is good. Um, I do feel a bit weak still, um, but I think that will be part of the course anyway here because our, our lungs are taking a bit of a beating from the constant smoke and stuff. So I feel like I've lost some of my capacity to work as hard as I would like to. Today we're gonna to actually hack into the into the cliffs. See if we can find some metal, which is good, nice and uh, expensive, valuable, and hope that the walls don't collapse as we do that. So this here, with this thing, they dig out until it gets loose. And then they shovel this into the river. The water washes away all the dirt. And the big pieces of metal that are visible, they just keep right away and then the rest are going to pan. So we're just taking the compact garbage out of the wall to the river. It's no wonder these guys are the skinny ripped ones.
day to day they count on the on the metal to uh, earn their living to feed their families. Pero una vez no te salió algo chévere, algo oro, bronze. Oh, he found a ring once. A chain, de plata. Earrings. Teeth, con oro. Gold teeth. Esto? Sí, So they use this magnet, it's quite clever. So you just go th over the top with it and it collects all the little pieces. And then I've been told we're supposed to take it off by hand without dropping it like I am doing right now. And then you just give it a quick wash and toss it in the bag. It's quite a satisfying job. Some washers and nails and those little tips off, uh, you know, the eraser and a pencil? Yeah. And there's no eraser left? Tiniest thing. Ooh, bottle caps. Oh. <laughs> so whatever that chemical is, when they mix it with gold, it doesn't do anything. So that's how they know it's gold. If it foams up like that, it's bronze. An un unspent bullet. It still says it's live and it could go off, but don't worry about it. Fuck it, put it in the bag. <laughs> No me entendé. Si es prohibido ir, como decir uno allá, andar churequeando en tu país. En Inglaterra, pues, es prohibido. Hay churequeros en Inglaterra. Ajá. No. 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 Reciclan. They work for themselves. And they have more uh, pride in what they do because they're not working for some man who's taken taking advantage of them and treating them badly, which is what could happen if they wanted to work on a plantation or yep. something over there. So they're entrepreneurial and they're um, resourceful. In innovative, yeah. There's some really great ideas down there. Um, Lacking any other opportunity. See, I was struggling that with before I came, wondering to what extent do people live off of the dump as a function of choice or necessity? Mm -hmm. And it's not a black and white answer. I think it's a little bit of both. I think obviously it's out of necessity. One has to work in the dump, or work in a banana, or work in a banana plantation, or do some other miserable job, because they don't have those options. But given those limited options, they've made the choice to stay in the limonada on their own terms to work off the dump, to be close to their families. Right. So, I guess in a long-winded way to answer my question is it's both, it's a function of necessity and choice, I think. I'm thinking that I'm ready to go because it's hard and but it'll be very, very sad to say goodbye to a lot of these people. Should we get going, boys? It's nine. Nine, right, come on. I'm torn. I'm, uh, I'm ready. My lungs are killing me. <laughs> I need to get healthy. You know what I mean? And I miss my family. Uh, so, so it'll be bittersweet. Today will be bittersweet. I don't know. Just what I, I'm gonna say to people when it's time for us to leave. They need to know how grateful we are that they were so welcoming to us. We, they are much more welcoming than I even expected them to be. And we didn't know if we were gonna find a community in chaos. Well, extremely hard-working community. An entrepreneurial community.
community that values being here. A community that's dependent on the garbage dump that's going to close. So a vulnerable community. A community that defines itself as poor. I think a community that's probably a little bit scared about the future. But like anywhere else, a community that is proud of what it's been able to build. People who love their families. People who work hard every day to make ends meet. People who make the choice every day to keep going on. Yeah, they're just they're just like us really. Except their situations is a lot more precarious. Corazón de los que les han ayudado para que este video sea hecho realidad uh -huh. está en el limonal también. Uh -huh. Los amo a todos. <risa> los amo. Los amo. Adiós. Your baby